All right, everyone, welcome back. We've got another busy week of the off season where quite a bit has happened because it's RL Esports. Number one, the former Cloud9 squad. It's teaming up yet again. This was Lion Blaze, Zanil, and Percy. They represented Cloud9 in split two of the 2024 season. They went to the quarterfinals, semifinals, and then went out in Swiss in the last event, but they were in land contention up until the last weekend. So not a bad split from them. They weren't expected to stick together at the start of this offseason, but here they are sticking together, running it back. They're not going to be under the Cloud9 banner as of now. They are looking for an organization. They were officially dropped from Cloud9 a little while back, so they will be looking for an organization to represent, but do not be surprised if this roster goes by the name Omelet to start the next season. Second thing, Wavy is expected to get the spot with Nolly and Kofer. So Nolly and Kofer were a duo that locked a couple weeks ago, according to RLTVcom, which I believe is Flitz. And they've been trying out a couple of players in that spot. Most notably, Wavy is probably going to end up getting the spot. They also tried out Evo in that spot. And another player that is still in consideration is Chicago. We're very likely to see it be wavy in the spot, and they are teaming up this weekend for the Rizzo and James Bot event of Club Dubs, but it's not officially locked as this deal will be running it for the 2025 season. It could still be Chicago, likely will be wavy. Another roster that has been talked about, along with you know just the North American Shuffle, looks like Hawkster and Evo might be a duo, and they might be getting Chicago. So. I'm assuming we will see this Hawks or Chicago Evo roster if Wavy does end up going to Nolly Kofer. That one's still much earlier in its stages, so we don't know for sure. But personally, biasedly, I'd love to see Hawks or Chicago reunite. Not that they technically would have ever really have split up from last season. They played together under the Space Station banner last year. I thought heading into this offseason that they could be a good duo if LJ ended up leaving, but it seemingly was looking like they were going to go their separate ways. Now they might come back to each other. So would not hate to see this squad. I think with Evo, you have a less high ceiling. It's going to be really hard to replace a player like LJ, but I think that's still a solid trail. Gen G Mobile One Racing is expected to sign the Rettles Magic Cheese roster. So according to Achilles, there were multiple different organizations seeking out this Rettles Magic Cheese roster. Not only that, Gen G was also seeking out multiple different rosters. Uh, the news came out earlier this week that Gen G was between three different options. They were between RMC, they were considering JNAP's Aqua and Eris, and they were also considering the Nolly Kofer duo. As the week progressed, it looked like Nolly Kofer duo was eliminated and that Gen G was in between JNAP's Eris and Aqua, as well as RMC. And it was either yesterday or earlier today. Um, I'm recording this on Friday, so it was days ago at this point if you're watching this on Sunday. But it does seem like Gen G's expected to sign RMC. So that's honestly a really good pickup for Gen G. I think I have this RMC squad rated around fourth, fifth in North America. I think they could easily get back into that land contention spot. And if you're looking for a slightly cheaper option than the super team that you had last year, and still looking to be represented on an international stage, I think that's a really good pickup. Not only that, you have Rettles with the content. I know Cheese has picked up on content a little bit on YouTube as well. I know Magic Bear had some in a, for a bit, but I think this trio of players also recognizes the importance of building out the brand, and I think that's something that Gen G is really looking for. So excited to see how that builds this season. NRG, I've got him in orange. For some reason, NRG with, went with this whole orange scheme, at least in the North American League of Legends scene before they dipped. But that's why I have them in orange, if anyone's asking. That and I just, I don't want to like, I'm going to run out of black markers. I use black markers a lot. So figured I'd, you know, spice things up, put some orange on the board. That being said, NRG, it's official. I mean, NRG haven't announced it, but basically we know that everything has been signed. NRG is going to be fielding the roster of Daniel, Beast Mode, and Atomic for the 2025 season. Now, this got a little bit shaky at the end. Apparently, there was another organization that tried to hijack the deal, come in last second, and be like, hey, Daniel, Beast Mode, Atomic, come join us instead. Uh, that being said, despite this attempt, NRG was able to get the deal through and get these players signed. So, 
Now, we don't know who this unnamed organization is that tried to, you know, step in and take this G2 or formerly G2 roster. There's a chance we will find out. There's also a chance that it'll never get confirmed. As of now, according to Achilles, and I'm going to shout out Alaris too. He's been on the RLCS subreddit. He's constantly going through the shift discord, like listening to what Achilles is saying, listening to what people are saying and like screenshotting some important moments. Achilles did say on that discord that it is possible that we see this unnamed organization go after the LJ first killer and chronic team next. So will we find out who this organization is? It's possible if they get that squad, but it's also looking very likely good news for LJ first and chronic that they're probably going to get an organization. And truth be told, that's way too good of a squad to not get a good org, especially because if I'm these three players, I'm feeling really snubbed right now. I mean, you had a deal with NRG that, I mean, you probably didn't have a deal, but you were in pretty lengthy discussions with NRG up until the moment that this formerly G2 roster became available. Then NRG said, no, nah, no, nah, you're the second best thing. And it feels like every organization is probably telling them they're the second best team. But I think no matter where they end up and who they end up under, they're going to have a massive chip on their shoulder and want to prove that they aren't the second best thing. They are the first best thing. So I'm actually very excited for this rivalry. I know it was technically, it's basically G2 versus Gen G of last season, but replaced apparently Jack with LJ. But I'm really excited for what this rivalry could bring for the next season. Last organization I have on here, Ninjas in Pajamas. I spelled it right this time. Apparently it's a Y instead of an A. Who knows? Aerospace engineer, not an English major. But Ninjas in Pajamas are prioritizing the Itachi, Nas, and Oski Rosker. Roster. Rosker. Whoops. Large Oscar. It's a tongue twister. So they're looking at that trio. That's a really deadly trio in Europe. I'd probably have them power ranked third, to be honest. Uh, it was originally rumored that they might have Alpha in with Itachi and Oski, but now it's basically confirmed that it's Nas. And I believe last week I was mentioning how Itachi, Oski, and Nas were in discussions with G2. Now, G2 isn't completely out of this picture just yet. But Ninja Pajamas also never left this picture. So it does appear that the two organizations are both interested in this roster and it's a matter of who they're going to end up signing with. Now, the reason why Ninja Pajamas is up here now is because G2 were in discussions with a potential partner like they had G2 Stride. They had that Stride partnership last year. Obviously not a thing anymore. But they're looking to get another partner for next year. And there was a slight bit of a hiccup apparently with some of the negotiation there. And so because of that, right now, it looks like Ninjas and Pajamas is more favored to sign this roster. That being said, don't be surprised if you see this roster representing either Ninjas and Pajamas or G2. At this point, I think the only thing that would be considered locked is that it will be this roster of three. So who they end up under, TBD. Right now, Ninjas are leading the chase, but we'll have to end up seeing. And the last thing that I have to talk about, unfortunately, is the Take the Throne land that was hosted by Team BDS has been canceled. This was a one day land that was supposed to happen on November 23rd. And I mean, it got canceled nine days before the start of the event. The reason this happened is that the BDS owner went off on Twitter and tweeted a lot of stupid things. And the other French organizations said, Absolutely not. We are not standing for this. I believe all three of them put out a joint statement, all three of them being Vitality, Carmen Core, and Gentlemates, put out a statement saying, hey, we do not accept the, you know, hatred language speaking by BDS's owner. Because of this, we are going to withdraw from the Take the Throne tournament that they are hosting. BDS then, well, BDS actually announced at first that they were canceling the land, but Based on Vitality, Carmine Core, and Gentlemates announcement, it made it seem like those three organizations forced their hand. Because truth be told, you can't really host that land if your three biggest invited teams pull out. So with the way those other French orgs phrased it, they withdrew, kind of forcing BDS's hand. BDS has since condemned the owner's tweets, which is always a tricky situation when you're like owned or when the esports organization is owned by something, it's like, oh, we have to disassociate from what the owner is saying. This happened with G2 actually a while back when Carlos went off on Twitter. They, I can't remember if he was the owner or the CEO. He might've been both. I 
honestly can't remember, but he was tweeting out a bunch of stuff that was unacceptable to do. And G2 ended up cutting ties with him. Now G2 was a big enough organization that they were able to do that and keep a lot of their fan base. If BDS is going to be able to do the same or if they want to do the same is to be determined. They have stated that, you know, the organization's values do not align with what the owner has been tweeted or what the owner has been tweeting. But from the Rocket League standpoint, it's very unfortunate that this tournament had to be the casualty. And in terms of BDS's future or the future of BDS as an organization, we'll have to see how that pans out because I can't imagine keeping the owner, giving them much good light heading forward. So the last thing I'll mention with the Take the Throne tournament is definitely more on the RLCS side. Extra, Astral, and apparently Jack is rumored to be the roster that they were going to be fielding heading into that Take the Throne land. That is BDS. Obviously, as hosts of the tournament, we're going to be fielding a team themselves. I wanted to see like a kind of uh, BDS reunion where they took a bunch of old players from BDS that used to be on it. And they at least got extra as part of that. But it doesn't surprise me if they just couldn't get three former players that weren't already on a team, considering half their team is on Vitality now. But BDS, the organization, was planning on fielding extra Astral and App Jack. Apparently, Jack has been in Europe. I'm guessing just because he wants to be home during the offseason. I'd be kind of surprised at this point to not see him in North America next season. I'd also be surprised if he wasn't going to be on Dignitas next season. It's looking very likely that he will be teaming with Stizzy and whoever they end up picking up. But according to Mithalion, what he was able to find is that, now this is not confirmation at all, but it has been rumored that Extra, Astral, and Matsur are now scrimming together. So this is an interesting mix as... I believe Extra and Mutzer were teaming for a flip and spin. They were teaming with Cash. It didn't end up going well. They ended up qualifying through OQ4 and then going out before making the playoffs of that event. And Extra and Astral were rumored to team for this. So I think replacing apparently Jack with Mutzer, not a bad option. I mean, Mutzer had a pretty solid flip and spin land himself. So they're at least trying that out. That is not a lock. That is not anything near like finalized but in terms of options that could be thrown out i figured i'd put that on there so that being said that was this week in rocket league it's been a mess actually that wasn't this week in rocket league because there's been a whole thing about the decals for the 2025 season not being allowed to have sponsors on them at some point i mean i keep alluding to it but at some point i am going to talk about the state of organizations in this esport because it's getting exhausting seeing what is going on I, I, I have too many words that I'm not ready to speak on just yet. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll be back at some point this week. We got to talk about orgs and the scene, but it's a lot more fun to talk about the roster building and what's happening in roster mania. So we're going to leave it at that. Hope you all enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys next time.